Hello friends, welcome to Weathercast. Today I am going to talk about Madden Julian Oscillation or MJO. In a very layman term, MJO is the largest intraseasonal variability in the atmosphere that occurs as a, as a result of the air sea coupling. So since the ocean is warmer, it interacts with the atmosphere, resulting in this oscillation that we call it as Madden Julian Oscillation. It was named after the two scientists who uh, first noticed this kind of a variability in the atmosphere. It is seen as an unidirectional wave that moves along the equator from west to east. So it has a eastward movement. It is largest intraseasonal variability because it covers the entire globe and thereby bringing periods of suppressed or convective activity. Uh, so which is either the activity uh, is uh, the rainfall activity is uh, large or the rainfall activity is low. MGO is active throughout the year, so it exists throughout the year. However, the primary role of MGO is in controlling the weather between the months uh, November to April. During the rest of the season, which is uh, during the southwest monsoon season, uh, MGO plays a secondary role because during that time, something known as MISO, which is the monsoon intra-seasonal oscillation, that takes over as the primary driver. However, MGO is active throughout the year in the sense that it, uh, it is seen as a movement of a unidirectional wave moving from west, west uh, to east. So this is in nutshell what we talked about in the previous slide. You see this is a wave pattern uh, which is moving from west towards the east and it, blue is basically an enhanced phase of MJO and red is the suppressed wave phase of MJO. During the enhanced phase it is wet, during the suppressed phase it is dry. So this is seen in the form of this convective uh, thunder clouds or um, uh, rain bearing clouds which are a result of the MGO movement uh, close to the equator. There are eight different phases of MGO uh, uh, and basically it is cate categorized as phase one up to phase eight uh, and uh, since it's a wave that travels across the globe so uh, each phase uh, is um, uh, part of a different region. So phase one is when the MGO is active over the uh, Western Hemisphere or the Africa, Atlantic and African uh, continents. Uh, phase 2 is when it enters the Indian Ocean and uh, uh, Phase 2 is in the West Indian Ocean and as it co becomes comes to Phase 3 then it is uh, West Indian, East Indian Ocean which is here. Uh, so Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal are the phases uh, are the um, regions which are covered during the Phase 2 and Phase 3 of MJO and as the MJO moves to Phase 4 then it covers parts part of the maritime continent or South China Sea while also covering a little bit of East Indian Ocean. And then in phase 5 it is uh, Western Pacific plus Maritime Continent and phase 6 is Western Pacific, phase 7 is Central and as it comes to phase 8 it becomes uh, a little bit of Atlantic plus uh, the Eastern Pacific. And then it again uh, it circulates back to phase 1, uh, to phase 2 and back to phase 8. So it is a loop basically. So uh, phases 2, 3 and 4 are what are interest to our Indian Ocean. Uh, because that is when uh, the Indian Ocean, uh, both the North Indian Ocean and the South Indian Ocean receive a lot of rain. Other phases are the suppressed phases. So we always wait for the MGO to move into our basin uh, because that is the re uh, that, is, that is going to uh, very likely bring a lot of wet activity to this, uh, to our country. However, there is a catch uh, which is the ampli amplitude of MGO. So how strong the coupling is because if the coupling is very strong, then only it will result in a widespread and very large amount of quantum of rain. Whereas if the coupling is very weak, then it will only lead to a scattered rain and a low quantity of rain. So the amplitude is the other feature which is very important. So I'm going to talk about that later. But the phases is how the MGO moves from one continent to other or one ocean to other ocean. So uh, the question uh, immediately, po immediately pops up as to how is MGO forecasted. It is forecasted in the form of a cloudiness pattern uh, between different ocean. So when it is blue, it is in the active phase and when it is in red, it is in the suppressed phase. And it is also plotted in the form of a phase plot, which is RMM, which is nothing but real multivariate uh, MGO index uh, is what RMM means. So it is it is a phase plot between RMM 1 and 2. I will explain later what, the, what they mean. Uh, and uh, like I said, the amplitude is important. So weak is a very weak MGO amplitude, which is very, although it is uh, in the Indian Ocean, but it is not going to result in a widespread rainfall activity. Only when it goes into a strong phase or moderate phase, then 
it has the capacity to produce a lot of convection and also cyclones or depressions and widespread heavy rainfall activity is uh, possible only when it gets into this strong zone okay and that is also seen by this inner circle and outer circle there are two concentric circle this is inner and outer circle so when the mgo is in the inner circle then that means it's a very weak phase of mgo so it has only when it comes out of this inner, inner circle then only mgo is actually in a super active phase but still once the mgo moves into the basin rainfall activity is going to happen because the convective activity activity between ocean and atmosphere is happening and convective clouds are going to form uh, rain bands are going to form however uh, unless and until the amplitude is strong uh, mgo cannot give very widespread rain so that is the difference that you have to understand okay uh, this is another forecast which is uh, through ncep which is the national uh, climate prediction center um, map and the same thing it plots the phase plot between rmm1 and rmm2 um, the two different quantities and uh, in the phase plot you can see eight is africa and western hemisphere and then as it two and three are the indian ocean four is maritime continent but as it goes some part of phase four also uh, benefits um, indian ocean east indian ocean especially and so it moves around so as you can see it is looping around so starting from uh, some date it keeps moving into this continent and then it will go back so this is how mgo behaves so it's a west to east moving wave so this is the most important aspect which uh, uh, is probably the most important aspect of this video that i'm making so how is mgo forecast and everybody knows uh, how to look at these plots but how is this plot obtained uh, so this plot is obtained based on the uh, famous article research article which was first um, uh, published by wheeler and hendon in 2004 um, although previous researchers have also published but this was kind of a cutting edge paper for MGO forecasting uh, so they what they did is they developed this R, uh, RMM this is what is RMM real-time multivariate MGO index uh, which was developed uh, so if you want you can read this paper fully but I am the next couple of slides I'm just giving a snippet of this paper so what this paper actually does is or what the MGO actually uses is it uses the OLR which is the outgoing long wave, long wave radiation so the forecasted outgoing long wave radiation from different models is uh, is obtained okay so this particular map is converted into a raw data where it means when the this is red then that means olr is very high because there are no clouds whereas when this is uh, blue that means there is a lot of clouds so olr will be low value so this uh, this uh, contour plot is converted into a uh, data format okay and it is uh, so since this is a forecasted model this is initial date uh, which is the date of forecasting then followed by the forecast itself so the um, um, when you are actually trying to get an mgo phase plot then you actually start with the olr olr data the outgoing long wave radiation data in every basin is very important so this is the entire globe which is put in a flat format um, so it is flattened out so you can see this is the west part this is the eastern part so mgo will move like this the second thing that is done is from the CFS forecast you actually get the wind data which is the wind zonal wind which is the um, east west to east wind uh, at 200 uh, HPA or 200 millibar level which is the upper uh, troposphere and you also get the same data at 850 millibar level which is the lower troposphere okay so the three data sets that are important for uh, formulating this RMM are the zonal wind at 850 millibar zonal wind at 200 millibar and the outgoing long wave radiation now what did uh, what the um, um, uh, method that has been prescribed for mgo phase plot uh, does is it combines all these three data sets which is the 850 millibar hpa zonal wind the 200 hpa zonal wind and the satellite observed outgoing long wave radiation data okay it combines all these fields near the equator so near the equator means it could be within um, so 5 degrees south to 5, 5 degree north that particular value it will average okay and that averaged value is now then put into a statistical metro methodology format where there is something known as an empirical orthogonal function which is a uh, purely mathematical based function where you are trying to find correlations between this data set so ortho orthogonality of this data set okay so all of these uh, all this data set is now put in a, a EOF format so um, it is run through a, a EOF algorithm which is empirical orthogonal function algorithm and what this spits out this particular uh, it's a very complex code so what this EOF code spits out 
is it will spit out uh, different faces so what it will do is it will it will spit out uh, different fields okay where the uh, so let us say five different um, uh, five different um, so this big data set is after you run it through the empirical orthogonal function uh, code then you what you will have is you will have uh, five different principal components okay so principal component is nothing but the most important correlation between this data is the first component then the least uh, correlation between these data sets is the last component okay so you will have different principal components okay from those principal different principal components you choose the first two because those first two components are the most important components because that gives the entire relationship between these three variables which is the 850 hpa zonal wind 200 hpa zonal wind and olr data Okay, because you want the most likelihood combination uh, which is possible and that is only obtained from the first two principal components which is PC1 and PC2 this is which is exactly what we call as RMM1 and RMM2 okay so the EOFs the empirical orthogonal functions give out the principal components out of that we choose the first two principal components which actually gives the qualitative location of convective clouds near the equator in the east to west direction okay I hope it is clear. So this is how the forecasting is done. You take the data, you run it through a empirical orthogonal function code, and then you get the two principal components. And the two principal components uh, will have a lag between each other, right? Because uh, first cloudiness and this, so let's say this RMM1 and RMM2 represents cloudiness. RMM1 and RMM2 will have a lag or lead. Either RMM1 will lead or RMM, RMM1 will lag, okay? Because it's a phase plot, right? You are trying to do it in a time so this is a time average where t is a running time since it's a time averaging so one will lead the other one will go faster than the other in time okay so now you then put it on a correlation map where you find the lead and lag between rmm1 and rmm2 for all the seasons or let us say uh, for that period of window where the forecasting was done okay then you pick each of these data sets of lead and lag and then put it on a phase plot that's all okay so when you put it on a phase plot you will get multiple points and that is the lead lag correlation between the two principal components is displayed in a phase plot which is what we see as the end, end, end result okay and the amplitude is nothing but the correlation value okay, the core, so this is a normalized correlation value this is not normalized okay so normalized means it is normalized with the highest value so that's why you get the maximum value of one but if you don't normalize it then you will get values of four three two or one because it is not relative it is absolute okay so uh, you take that norm, uh, non normalized correlation value that is the amplitude because if the amplitude is very high that means the cloudiness coefficient is very high okay so either this point will fall inside this box or outside this box okay and either the point will fall here or it will it will either lag or lead depending on whether what kind of uh, which point you are choosing okay so if this is this point which is zero days in the zero day it will be let us say in the indian ocean and as you move ahead in time it may go here okay so that is how you get the phase plot okay. i hope it is clear so in a very nutshell mgo uh, forecasting is done using three data sets which is 250 200 hpa wind zonal wind three uh, 850 hpa zonal wind outgoing long wave radiation all these three are combined and run through a eof uh, code which is the orthogonal empirical orthogonal function code and you get different principal components out of those the different principal components only the first two principal components are important because they are the one that uh, fully represent the uh, MJO amplitude as well as the um, nature okay and when you when you put it on a when you do the lead lag correlation you get the uh, phase plot right so that I hope this uh, video was useful because a lot of us know that uh, we look at only the final plot all right of MJO which is this but we also have to understand how it is obtained and that is why MG, so since it is actually obtained from the forecasted data Okay, that's why sometimes MGO accuracy is is go, uh, goes for a toss because it is coming from forecasted data. All right, so um, uh, the forecasted MGO will always have some accuracy issues with it, but nevertheless it will give some idea of where, how the MGO is propagating. Okay, whether the MGO is going to stay in the basin for a very long time, or it is, or that means the lag is zero, it is not moving, or is it going to move out? Okay, so if the lag only when the, once the lag shifts, then only MJO will move out of that basin. Otherwise, both of them will show a zero lag. Okay, so it will stay put in a 
uh, in one basin for a very long time. All right, so uh, please subscribe to my channel for uh, regular updates, educational videos along with the dynamics. I'm mostly focusing on the dynamics aspect of it. Uh, so I hope this is useful for all of you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.